Welcome to Get Better Basketball Live. I'm Coach DeMarco, and today my guest is Sean Strickland, former college basketball coach who now runs one of the premier AAU programs in the entire country called Strick Hoops. Coach Strickland is also a trainer and mentor to many coaches. Coach Strickland is going to share with us his attack offense and specifically how he attacks zone defenses. You're not going to want to miss this episode. So make sure you hit that like button down below, turn on your notifications, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great content each and every week. Another Get Better Basketball Live is up now. Coach DeMarco here with Get Better Basketball Live, and today my guest is Coach Sean Strickland. Coach, how are you doing today? Good, Coach. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome, and I, I really appreciate you joining me again today. I know last time we had a chance to talk attack offense, and uh, you know so much great stuff came out of that. So many coaches have reached out. I'm sure you've had yes. coaches reach out yes. to you as well. <laughs> and now we're going to really hone in today on the zone portion of the attack offense. And I'm, I'm excited to hear about this. I've, I've learned a little bit about it from our, our past conversation, but as coaches are, are, you're taking coaches through the attack zone offense today, if you will, uh, what, what are some of the highlights that they're gonna see before we jump into uh, the presentation here? Yeah, so that, that, that's a good point. I, it's the attack offense. One of the things that makes it successful, in my opinion, is it's the same versus man or zone. Technically, it's the same versus man or zone. So it helps us like, with preparation time. We don't have to prepare differently for different teams. Um, so we teach concepts. And, and if you teach concepts, it actually makes it a little bit easier uh, when you go play against different teams. So no matter what a team throws at you, our players are ready to go against that team because they understand the concepts behind it. So we'll talk about uh, cutting against the zone, screening against the zone, um, driving against the zone, uh, multiple looks. Uh, we, I don't worry about odd versus odd or even versus even or any of those kind of things. The key is I want our players to be playing as fast as possible and thinking the least amount as possible. And so that's what we try to do with the attack offense, make it really simple, make it conceptual, and then let them go play the game. Coach, I really admire you as a coach because you've been – at the college level, you're now in the AAU game with a very successful, and I know, uh, growing AAU program. You're doing some great things there. Love all the stuff you put out on social media as well. So I just want to ask you, you know, with this attack offense, because you've coached across all these different levels, which is unique. Not everyone has that experience. Is this something that, you know, can be used at the AAU level or the high school level? and then the college level and, and you know, so on. A, a great question. Uh, we set it up that way. Now, obviously the older they get, the more they can, they can take in, the more they can do. Um, but yes, I teach the same offense from the bottom up to every level. So, and then we just kind of, depending on the team, I'll take them as far as they can go, you know, and then every year that they're with me, I'll just build on that and they'll keep getting better and better and understanding the concepts. I mean, as you know, Teaching any kind of conceptual or motion offense takes a while as it is. So the older that they get, um, the better that they get with those things. But yeah, we we teach the same whether you're in fourth grade playing for us or whether I coach at the college level. It's it's the same exact offense. It's kind of funny. We're talking about people contacting me. I've had people contact me from youth to middle school to high school to college and help them all. I haven't got back to everybody yet, and I apologize, but I will now that I'm I'm kind of a retired college coach now. So I have some time to get back to you on that. Well, that's awesome, Coach. And one of the things I love about it is the conceptual nature of your offense. And I love how it's applicable for man-to-man -man and also zone as well. So really excited to take a deep dive into the attack offense today. So let's get started. All right, Coach. Well, we're going to go over this attack offense here. I just Before I do, I want to make sure that I share who I am so people just don't think I'm just anybody <laughs> just sharing this stuff. So just 20 years of experience, like you said, I do the strict hoops. I also run a girls league in our area, fourth through sixth. Um, and then I created the tack offense. It's kind of funny because I get talked about like, oh, it's the dribble drive or oh, it's the ball screen motion or, and it's, it's pieces of everything. And we kind of meshed it together to make it how I want it to be. And there's my contact information. If anybody sees anything that they want to want more of, want fast draw, whatever you want, 
Uh, there's all my information. You can call me, you can email me, you can catch me on Twitter, whatever you want to do, whatever's easiest on your end of things. So um, there's the history of the attack offense. I got to run it the last six years of, as I was a head coach. We made a women's and men's national tournament, which uh, I'll bet you there's probably not more than 50 coaches in the nation that have done that. So uh, pretty special there. We finished top three in the conference and scoring five of those six years, set school records, had a bunch of really great players, all conference, all Americans and thousand point scores. So it's been really successful for us. Obviously having good players helps uh, and developing good players helps, but uh, our offense definitely helps good players be even better, I think. So against the zone, like we talked about at the beginning, the offense is the same versus the man or zone. We're going to attack the gaps with cuts, drives, and screens. And we're going to get the ball inside the triangle. Now, you know what the triangle is because I keep posting it when we talk a little bit on Twitter and stuff. But now, and we were talking a little bit earlier about how I'm technologically impaired. And Coach is definitely much more advanced than I am when it comes to this stuff. So I just realized that you could get on fast draw and change the color of the shading, which I didn't know. So now that we can do that, I can actually look like I did a real thing here with the triangle. So you can actually really see the triangle now. The triangle goes from the top of the key, through the elbows, through the short corners. We call the short corners the room because I'm not smart enough to use multiple words and multiple syllables and stuff. So room works for us. So that's our aiming point. Even in our man offense, our zone, when you drive against the man or zone, we're we have to get inside that triangle. And even when we do drills, we talk about getting inside the triangle every time we're trying to get in there in the least amount of dribbles. So any questions about the triangle before I go on? All right. So next one, the advantages to our offense. It's consistent. It saves us practice time. Like no matter what we play against, whether it's a man, a two, three, a one, three, one, a three, two, we teach conception, conceptual motion um, actions. So we don't have to worry about what you're doing defensively. We know how to play against it. It's flexible. We go any look, any player positioning, and it's unpredictable. It's no patterns. And one of my favorites is it's not scoutable. And to me, that's huge. When you get to our level at the college level, um, the scouting's unreal because everything's out about you so they can see everything. So at some point, your players are going to have to be able to make plays against defenses that are really prepared for them. If they know how to play, then they can play against anything. So some of the teaching points. So the first teaching point, we talk about bounce passing it inside the zone. Now, you are going to see some video during this sharing that we don't do that, but we try to really emphasize bounce pass it in between the zone because a lot of the arms are out and about sideways or, or above like they're taught and not a lot of people are reaching down. So when we try to push the ball inside the zone, a lot of times it's off the bounce pass. And I got a little bit of video here to show you. So here's a, the, a, some video about us making bounce passes inside the zone. First, it's gonna be a skip pass here and then see how the bounce pass inside not a lot of zone defenses get down and get that bounce pass. Same thing, bounce pass inside the zone. And then even on this last one, little drive, bounce pass inside the zone. So we really emphasize those things to our players um, in terms of beating the zone that way. So here, all right, so teaching points. The next teaching points, utilize ball fakes. I know none of this stuff is earth shattering new for anybody, but there's a lot of young and new coaches out there. And these are little things that I, this is why I appreciate what you do coach. Cause if these things were out, this would save me a lot of time when I was a young and new coach where I could see it and get better quicker. So I appreciate these things. Like I didn't know these things when I first started coaching, we're just, and, and so hopefully when we share these new coaches go, okay, utilize ball fakes, we'll start doing that. So here's some video ball fakes. We get it inside. See the ball fake creates the lower, Part of the zone gets out of place, and because he does, we go attack that person, we get an and one. Here, you're going to see a bunch of ball fakes and shot fakes. Everything's a shot fake or a ball fake, getting people out of position in the zone. Score. So, again, utilizing those ball fakes, whether it's a shot fake, whether it's a pass fake, utilize those ball fakes against the zone. And the last thing we emphasize, practice perimeter shooting with zone passes. and. This is really interesting for people. I didn't know this <laughs> until we played a team, got beat because they played a zone. And the coach and I are good friends, and he shared maybe a little bit too much with me. He said, how many times do you actually practice the pass on the perimeter against the zone? So, for example, if we're, if we're, hopefully you can see this a little bit. If we're on the wing, 
They were on the wing and we pass it down to the corner. How many times do we practice that? Because if you think about most shooting drills, most shooting drills that go inside out. They're like a man. It's just like they have in the, the dish or, you know, so most of those shooting drills, everything comes inside out to you. And that's the way that you're trained to shoot. Well, that's why a lot of teams play zone is because you pass the ball on a perimeter and it's a different angle catching and shooting. And so make sure that you're practicing those zone shooting angles. And I'll show you, I'll show you this right here. Coach, as can we, I just ask as, yeah. as we're pulling up this clip and we're going to get yeah. to in a second, you know, uh, the ball fakes, the bounce passes, the practicing those, uh, like the zone passes, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, is that, that's something you, you mentioned the shooting drill. There's some other ways that you're incorporating that into practice. Is that a, on a daily basis or a weekly basis that you're trying to work on, you know, those bounce passes into a zone or, uh, the zone shooting drills or things like that? So that's, that's a really good question. For me personally, I'm a little bit different than most, maybe a lot different than most, but we do a lot of skill development. So we've already worked on bounce passing and, and making those passes. But when we go to play a zone, um, then we'll just talk it and emphasize it at that point in time. You know, so we, we've worked on, again, we've worked on all the skills that can beat any defense. Now, when we go to play somebody, now we, we talk about those conceptual things. So now I'll take it back to the AU where we're not allowed to scout. We're prepared to play against either, and, and we've done bounce passes and drills. So that way, when I say, hey, we're playing a zone today, because I saw them play earlier, make sure you bounce pass that inside against them. And, and they know, like, it just triggers it. So, again, it's, you know, I, I saw coaches respond to something we put out there the other day where it, you get what you emphasize. And so we really emphasize these things when we go play for, against the zone, not so much as practice kind of that way, if that makes, if that makes enough sense. So, it does. But yeah. Thank so, you. Yep. All right. So this is uh, so this is going to be a pass across the top of the zone. Again, check what I'm about to show you. Just watch the passing angles and see how different they are than coming inside out. Are you practicing these shots in practice? This is across the top. Are you practicing that catch and that shot? So same thing across the top. Are you practicing that pass and that catch? And then even this little one that I just showed you from the wing down to the baseline. Are you practicing that in practice? So this is a little bit of a skip pass. And so you want to do some skip pass shooting too. Oh, and then right here. So this one right here, this is a teaching point. When the ball gets caught at the high post, the best thing a wing can do if they have an open corner is to slide down so the player can see them. It's a lot easier for them when they start to pivot to see down. I call it down. Other people might call it differently, but to see visually down towards the corners rather than sideways or back. So we really talk about drifting down to the corner when the ball is caught at the high post. So that way they can see you better in this situation. Now, I told you I wasn't going to pause these, Coach, but let's see if this works. There we go. All right. Okay. So, again, are you practicing those passes? Are you practicing those types of things to, to go against the zone? All right. Old school teachings. This is my favorite. I'm really old. So I, I know that I may not look that old, but I'm getting my AARP card here in a couple of weeks. So I'm a little bit older than most people think. So old school teachings and I was involved in them and I actually taught a lot of these things too. So one of them go even versus odd or odd versus even. Uh, don't you think zone defenses like the predictability of knowing how you'll match up versus their zone? They absolutely do like the predictability. That's why I don't know if anybody's familiar, but Jim Beheim will tell you he doesn't run his own defense a lot during practice. He doesn't need to. He knows what you're going to do against it. Um, I ran a zone against a team that finished fifth in the nation in the USCAA. We didn't work a lot on our zone defense, to be quite honest, because I knew how you were going to play against it. So that's why I'm big on any look, any player positioning. We're going to go through this. This is a little bit longer of a clip. We're going to go through this, and I'm going to show you how we put players in different spots. We come down in different looks. And it doesn't matter what zone defense you're playing against us. I mean, we'll run a five out versus a three, two. We're basically we're matching up one on one on the perimeter the whole time. So we don't worry about it. So we're going to come down here. This is a really good possession. Actually, we only dribbled the ball once or twice here. It's a four out look versus a two, three zone. Again, all we're worried about is attacking the gaps. It doesn't matter what, what we come out at. This is a four out one in. We have a wing on the inside here where he can pop out and be, be a playmaker. We actually showed this in the shooting clip too, but he could be a playmaker and help set that up. So that's a four out look against the two, three. 
Here's another four outlook with a shooter at the high post. See how he drifts out and they lose track of the shooter. That's against the two, three. Again, another two, three. Now we have our point guard in the middle of this two, three. He drifts out, is able to move the ball around, creates the gaps in the defense. Again, we're not worried about who's where. Here's a five out against the two, three. And we just showed this on the shooting also. Here's against the one, three, one defense. We're at a five out to start. We then cut and looks like a three out look now. Again, we don't care. We don't worry about odd versus even or even versus odd. Again, a one, three, one. This is kind of ugly at first, but it's a four out look. We get an inside out action. Buckets. Okay, this is the five, this is the five out against the three, two. Again, we don't worry about anything. We still attack the gaps. We still attack the triangle and we get a bucket out of it. And I think this is the last one. This is a one, three, one against the three, two. We have a, what we call a slice action. We'll get into that where we get a double cut. It turns into where we get a layup off that too. So again, we don't care about what look you come out in and we don't worry about, well, we gotta be in this look versus your zone or this. We play conceptually and we just play and, and different players may play that a little bit differently. Um, you know, we may have some, uh, we may have a group that has to play. We may have a, a group that has to play five out. We may have a group that has to play two, three out, two in. Um, it just matters on what players we have and where they feel comfortable. So any well, questions you, with that before I go to the next phase of this? Well, yeah. Could, could you just talk a little bit about um... – I know you you, you kind of took a dive into this in the first video that you, you use kind of the five out four out three you know mm -hmm. use different kind of setups or looks and the concepts uh, are, are essentially the same and you can kind of based on personnel or your opponent. But can you talk a little bit about that? I know we saw some five out, some four out. So is that like a little bit of your personnel and what you guys are good at, and a little bit of the opponent's personnel or? How are you gauging when you're five out versus four out and so on and so forth? A, a great question. Um, for the most part, when we go to play, we play with whatever our players are comfortable doing. So mm -hmm. if we're playing and our players are comfortable being in a five out look, that's the way I let them play. Because as we get into this and I show you the drive and the cut action and stuff, you're gonna, they're going to cut inside the zone. They're going to get inside the zone anyway. So it, in the end, it kind of still turns into like either a one, three, one, you know what I mean? Like it still turns into somebody gets in there. It's just different people. And that's what confuses a zone a lot is we don't have the same person on the inside of your zone. It could be a different person, whether they're cutting, screening, um, posting up those kind of things. So a lot of times it's based on us. However, there are definitely times where we'll play a team and their zone may be affecting us in a certain way. And I decide to take a playmaker and put them in the middle of the zone rather than a post player. Um, putting somebody at the high post where now they're our main score and they we want to get them the ball and then they can create the action from there so that's that's on that's on me to see as the game goes on and, and so when we go into a game when I was a college coach I would give them here's what we're looking for and then if they if that doesn't work right away then I, I would make the adjustment and say hey I think our four out look with a high post and it's got to be you at the high post because you're going to make plays, then we would do it that way. So, you, so again, I think that one of the things that you, you like about our offense is that flexibility. And that's what it gives me is that flexibility as a coach to kind of read the game and see like, do we need to make that adjustment? And the great thing coach about it is when we make that adjustment, our players can make that adjustment. It's not like they say, man, coach, I never did that in practice. I don't know how to play in that spot. And that's, I think, a big key is they never get in a spot where they're uncomfortable playing. We always put them in spots where they're comfortable playing. And I think that makes for better basketball players. No, I, I love that, Coach. And I'm looking at your next slide here, which I really <laughs> like as well. Best way to beat a zone, don't let it get set. That's so right. uh, interested to hear you talk a little bit more about this. <laughs> this is more, I think, a, a, a gratuitous thing on my part, just to show our really fast offense, just say, because everybody knows don't let it get beat in the first place. And people talk about that, but this is just a good way to show our offense going really fast. And I, I enjoy that stuff. So let me, uh, let me get this going here and I, I'll just kind of let it speak for itself. It can be ugly at times like this, but you know what, if you're attacking before they can get set, then they're scrambling the whole time. And again, 
we're pushing the ball down. This is too many, two dribbles because we could have done this without a dribble, but that's that, that's that shot coming around the perimeter. And then the last one, we talk about getting the ball up the floor as far as possible. We do here. Again, they're scrambling. No one knows where they're supposed to be in the zone. They leave a gap, but we just attack. It. So, I mean, I think in all those, the most dribbles we had, there was like two dribbles and we got the bucket. Again, that's just, that's more for me, coach, but because everybody knows don't let the zone get set, but I wanted people to see we do play some fast offense and I enjoy playing that fast offense. So, okay, attacking the zone. Now they're old school teaching here. Passing versus the zone is greater than dribbling, okay? And so, again, I was a, I was a believer in this uh, back, back in the day when I was first a coach. And then I can't remember who it came from, um, but I learned that you want to attack the gap. So isn't the idea of the zone defense to protect the lane and keep you out of the perimeter in the first place? And it absolutely is. They want you to shoot perimeter shots. They want you to get comfortable making perimeter shots because they know it's not going to happen all game long. So we still teach our drive action. The teaching points are we attack gaps or closeouts. And your drive needs to get you inside the triangle of defense, preferably with the least amount of dribbles. The less dribbling, the better. And to be quite honest with you, we talked about my training earlier. Like, that's the way I train, too. I think that's one of the reasons why I'm a different trainer than other people is because I've coached at the high school and college level. I try to teach players to be part of the offense and not the whole offense by dominate the ball. And so we really work on the least amount of dribbles to do things, the better. So I'll show you some clips of this. Just attack in the triangle. Here, we're going to, the minute we get it back, we create a gap. There's no hesitation. We're attacking that triangle. Again, same thing. Attack the triangle. They close down. Opens up open shots at the three level. Same thing. Attack the triangle. Attack it again. Causes people to close down in the gaps. And it opens up shots. Here's like a little dribble weave. Same thing. Opens up wide open shots. Again, if you're attacking the triangle, you're going to create openings. Now, watch how many times you do it here. So there's one. We create help. One situation, we do it again. We just keep trying to attack the triangle this time. We get it. We do it again where we cause the second person to come up and we finally get our wide open shot off of it. So that's something we really emphasize is if you're going to dribble against the zone, you better be attacking that triangle. I hate, I just hate some really bad word. I do not like dribbling sideways. And when I say dribbling side, I tell them like we're going sideways. We're not attacking. We have to attack it at all times. So we really emphasize doing that. So any questions about the drive before we go to cut here? No, but I think you bring up a great point. And I think really at the high school level, a lower level, you see it especially where against the zone, they dribble and they kind of go around the perimeter and they go sideways and you really want them to get into the zone. And that's where I think you know, the, the triangle really helps because you want players to get feet, you know, a foot or two feet into yeah. that triangle or, or more if you really can get into the paint even further. But um, I think that's where that really helps players to kind of visualize that. And, you know, I think I do agree with the passing, the idea that you bring up about passing because a lot of teams will just pass the ball around the zone. Similar, to, It's very similar to dribbling around the zone. Yeah. I've done it. I've had, had it, especially at the Me lower too. levels. And that ball keeps going around the zone. It's like, well, we're passing against the zone, but you're not passing it. You know, there's never a middle pass and you don't. So that, that was always one of my big things with the zone was like, we want to get the ball into the middle before no anything out. Like we want to try, you don't force it, but if it's a dribble, if it's a couple passes and then a pass middle, and then we can kind of function from there. And so I think those are really great points that you're making in terms of the zone. And with this offense, I can see why, you're able to get the ball into the triangle. I mean, your yeah. teams were doing that pretty consistently. So that was nice to see. And any, anytime you get the ball into the triangle and you, you know this as well as that, I mean, a zone's really just over helping defense. So anytime you get the ball inside the triangle, you're going to force that second defender to come to you and it's going to yeah. create open people. And that's, that's really all we want to do. You know, we talk, it's, it's hard for them to understand at first, but a lot of times you're driving, you're cutting, you're screening for somebody else to score. You're doing the action, but you're going to draw that second defender and you're really trying to help a teammate score in that situation. And once they start to understand that, the game gets so much fun because they realize they're opening up shots for their teammates. And that's that to me, that's when you have your best teams and that's when you have a lot of fun coaching those teams. So um, cut, cut action. So our cuts, there's a difference between a zone cut and a man cut. The zone cut stops inside of an open pocket, the zone. So it's like a football player. It's like a Rob Gronkowski going across the middle. 
He's either going flying because he's got somebody behind him, man to man, or he sits down right in that pocket. And that's what we do. So you can't really, in my opinion, it's really hard to tell somebody this is going to always be open in the zone because the gaps kind of slide and open up in different places. So we just talk about getting to the openings. If you After you sit down for one count, two count, you don't get it, then you go through and go opposite just like you wouldn't a man cut. And our terminology, because – I'm probably going to say it here, and I want to make sure that when I say it, you guys know what I'm talking about. Single cut is a cut, and a double cut is a slice. Because, again, I can't say double cut. That's way too much verbiage for me. So slice is what we use for the double cut there. So, And here's some video of the cuts. So the first one is just a point guard cutting down through. She sits in the opening. We find her, and she gets a layup out of that. That's a five outlook against the two, three. Here we're going to get a slice both players are going to cut through it. It causes, watch the confusion. The top of the defense had no idea who was where, and we get a wide open look out of it. This is a great one. We get a shallow cut to start. We get a basket cut. We get all the cuts in this one. So we don't dribble and see the inside as well as we need to. There's a slice there. So we got every cut that we have in our, in our basketball playbook, basically, in one possession. So that, that, that to me is like the altar. We had a shallow cut, a basket cut, a slice. We had it all right there and it worked and we scored. And no, we didn't put the ball inside the zone, but our players cut inside the triangle. And that's where mm -hmm. like, that's the difference is the ball may not always get in there, but if you're cutting inside the triangle and you're causing that, that defense to shift like that, you're going to find openings in their defense. Okay, so screen action. Um, I don't have a ton of stuff in terms of video on this stuff, but enough to kind of show you. So screen action, we want to utilize screens to create two-on-one -on opportunities. Now, people talk differently. I noticed like you had a screening uh, uh, thread the other day when you were talking about screening. And so when I'm saying two-on-one, I'm actually talking off the ball, our two versus their one. But it also creates a one-on-two because two players will come to that person. So it's however you want to talk about it is is how the two-on-one goes so i don't want to confuse people it could be either way uh when we screen we can screen or post up the middle of the zone a lot of times people don't understand if you just post up the middle of the zone whether you want the ball or not you're going to occupy that middle defender against the zone and it's basically like a screen so you can run a lot of plays where all your post player does is sit right in the middle against that zone and it's going to create space for others Ball screens, the biggest thing for our ball screen is the driver needs to be thinking score attack on, on the catch. Uh, ball screens don't work if they aren't thinking that. And our terminology is away for an away screen, a single away screen, a stagger for a double away screen, and a double for a double ball screen. That's, again, one word that we're using for all our terminology, so that way it's easier on Coach Strickland, to be quite honest with you. So, all right, so some screens here. Here's a ball screen. Note, oh. Here's a ball screen. Notice how it creates a two on one on the right side here. And we're going to get a shot either. We could have gotten a shot either from the wing or the corner. It didn't matter. Again, we're going to hit, hit a ball screen in the middle now. Now, this was an All American. So this wasn't the greatest play in the world. But when you have an All American, she got fouled. She can do whatever she wants in the middle of that zone. And then we now there's an away screen. So we set the away screen. It creates a two on one on the back side. Defense gets confused, leaves them wide open for a wide open shot. And if we get wide open shots, whether they go in or not, that's the whole point of the offense. Because if we get more wide open shots in our offense, we're probably going to make more shots than you do when we're contesting your shots on the other end. And that's all the videos. Um, any questions? I'm going to show you a couple. This is this is probably going to make some people fall off their chair that know me. But I'll show you some sets and some plays, which I'm not huge about. But I'll give you some zone stuff because I know some people will want to steal some sets in place. So I'll give you some of that. But before we go into that, any questions about what we cover, Coach? Anything you want to go over you think the coaches out there might want to hear? No, I, I just want to say I love the, the cutting action, the, the, the two cuts into the zone, you know, simultaneously. I think and that's something that's probably underused, if you will, um, as I watch teams and even my own teams you know, someone passes, it's one cut. It's a lot easier to defend. When I saw those two players go into the zone, and I know coaches will probably go back and, and watch that clip now um, and rewind back. But as I saw those two players go into the zone, it, it was mass confusion because <laughs> players were pointing and who, who, who do I need to, right. you know, check here as they come in through the zone. So 
I think that's a really nice wrinkle to have. And then obviously ball screening the zone is something I probably didn't do enough early on in my career. And as I went along, I incorporated a little bit more and, you know, just to get those two top players uh, to kind of defend one and then that nice. kick to the wing or the one more to the corner is, is really nice. So those are some really, really great things that you showed here. And I think it's really nice seeing the video clips to kind of complement uh, what you're saying as well. Good. Um, now I'm going to give you, you know, I had this in a different order, but since you were talking about ball screens, I'll show you the ball screen one first. We want a game on this, actually. We needed a three-pointer, and I think even the wrong kid got the shot, but it went in, so that's all that matters. So this is one that I think everybody has. We run, the two, we run it against a two-three, so we start off we start off in a three-out look. Now, you could change however you want to change this, but at the end, I'll show you where people need to be. So you, you could, as a coach, you make it you. Make it you. I'm, I'm big on BU coach, so you make it you, coach. So what we would do is we get the ball to the wing on the right side and the left side mostly. So that way we can drive right because most of our players are right handed. When we do that, we would take this point guard and cut him through to the corner or push it down, depending on what you want to do or who you want where in this case. All right. So once we pass it and they go to the corner, this opposite person is your ball screener or your post, and they'll come up and they'll screen the inside of this zone. When they do that, it's gonna force it's gonna force this guard to make a choice, this defender to make a choice. When we go and attack this ball screen, are they gonna gap it? Are you shooters open? Now we have a two on one on this side against this low person, or are they gonna stay there? Now, once we go, we actually send this person over too to occupy here. Because if, if they come up, if they leave the gap and we attack middle and this comes up, now we got a seal and a bounce pass to here. If this defender stays inside, we got a kick to here. So it's impossible to defend. And if you want me to uh, fast draw, just contact me. I'll send it to you on fast draw. It's impossible to defend. You can get any shot that you want to get on it. Um, you just got to decide who you want to put where in those situations because you don't want to have a non-shooter in your shooting spots kind of thing. So you you decide where you want to be. So we just called that one because it was one single ball screen. See how simple I am, coach? One one single ball screen. <laughs> Honestly, the terminology, the simplicity in the terminology, even that play call, I love. And, and that is simple. And really, I think about across all levels. And it really does put the defense in a bind. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what you have next. Okay. So now this one, I'm going to call three because we're going to put three players in a stack. Okay. So that's it. I know this terminology is really tough. But I, I got this, this one I got from Coach Huggins. So Coach Huggins gave a really good talk at a clinic one time about zone offense. And, and the biggest thing I took from it was distort DIS. Sometimes my New York accent kills that. Distort the zone defense. So he said, put your players like, so we lined up three people right here. Really weird. Okay. And then we had our point here. And then. This has got to be a shooter over here so the defense respects the other side of the floor. Because if the defense is going to overload to us, then we're going to throw it over to our shooter and let them bang threes all day against us. So, so against this, that's, I, I just keep doing two, three. Like, you can do this against anything, but it's easier for me to show it against two, three. So against this, this person pops, this person pops, and this person's your post player and seals the middle of that defense. So now when we throw this ball, when we throw this ball here, this person's going to jump this, right? And this person's going to do what? This person's going to worry about that person in the corner, right? Well, now we've just sealed the, the middle of this. So now they're out there. Our point guard goes right down the gap. We throw it to them. They basically lay the ball in the basket at that point in time. So we could get, again, now that's not how it always works. Sometimes we just throw it to the post player because if they got a good seal, all they got to do is turn around and lay it in. Sometimes they don't cover a shooter. We throw it in. Now, when they overload this, and this is what I learned why you got to put your shooter over here, because like anything else, I messed it up for a while. I couldn't figure out why this team could stop this play, but it's because they started to overload everything. So basically, all five people were over here. So when we put the shooter over here, we would just skip this, mm -hmm. and they get a shot all day. And again, if you got a good, a, a decent shooter over there, you're gonna get, you're gonna make out more than you're not gonna make out. So that's that's three right there. Again, I could show you that. It's actually in one of the videos, if you pay close attention to it. I'm not going to tell you which one. 
that they can DM me and ask me. They got to go back and check it out. The Zags yeah. ran something similar, not out of the, the three player stack, but they uh, screened the middle of the zone and had the player circle through. I'm going to put a link up. I have yes. that video on my YouTube channel. So I'm going to put a link up top because it's very similar. And then they can go back and check out your play and they'll have two of those kind of plays where they can screen the inside of the zone. So <laughs> one right there. All right, I got two left. One's going to be against the 3-2, and one's going to be an out-of-bounds one. Awesome. Now, this, against the 3-2, you know, the, you, the people out there that know me are probably like, he had all these plays? I can't believe he had all these plays. <laughs> all right. I had them all just in case, Coach, just in case. So against the 3-2, and I saw this one. I, I stole this one because when it happened and I saw it when I was recruiting, I was like, wow, is that a good play? Because – I'm going to show it to you one way, but I'm going to show you how you can do it any which way that you want to do as a coach. So we're playing a 3-2, and you can line up. You can line this up any way that you want to line this up. Um, I'll line it up as a 3-2 look against them right now. So what they did was they X'd out their – screeners okay so again you can x out this any way you want what they did was they had a right-handed driver and this driver took one dribble this way and what happened was as he went this way this screener came here and screen and this screener came here and the person just took the gap and went in and laid the ball in the basket won the game and so now again if they play out you have a shooter out here and you could do this screening this is where i want you to be this is where i want coaches to be them because you actually, you could do this however you want to do this. You could actually screen these people, right? And if you just make a move against this one person, you're going to have that same opening, that same gap. Okay, so you can screen that however you want to screen that. And, and so, like, and I could go through multiple other ways. But, again, that's where, as a coach, you fix it how you want to fix it. The main thing is that these two people – cross when they screen because what happens coach is they lose that person crossing and so they don't even know it's coming so when this person dribbles this way and they're all looking they're getting actually blind it's almost like a football hit is what it is they get blindsided that person goes right by them so that's against the three two and then the last one that is that is a great set too coach at all levels i mean you could use that at the youth level and, and yeah. you get your your guard that's firing down the middle and the layup you could that's use right. that at the high school and college level too. So that that's a great all level type of set play that you can use against the zone as well. Seems like a common theme, right? All my stuff's so simple that you can use it at every level. And that's more because the coach has got to be simple, not because the players are simple. So. Simple, but it's effective. And I think that's, that's what there I take out of it. Okay, so now the, the blob, um, let's say we're taking it out on this side. If I draw on my wall, I don't know if it'll come off, but I'll draw on my wall anyway. So we're on the wall there. Let's say it's a two, three zone. We actually overload the opposite side, which looks really funky to people. Can you see all four of those? I can't tell. So we overload the, this side because now they don't know what's happening. What happens here is this person, this player goes across. So they occupy the middle. This person is just a safe. They occupy the middle. And what does this person do? They're so worried about this shooter, they jump out because they forget about this person standing all by themselves. And this person literally cuts the basket and gets a layup every time. You'd be amazed at how many times that works where they literally forget about this person right here cutting to the basket once we split this and they lay it in the basket against the zone because they don't see things like that because it's, it's completely opposite of what, what I guess normal would be. So utilize that one. In, in certain situations, I guarantee you get a layup out of it. It could be in a big game situation. It could be in a big time. You know, steal that one. That's actually a pretty good one. Well, Coach, I've said it a couple of times, but I feel like, you know, there's simplicity in what you're sharing, but it's very intentional. I like the, the, the conceptual nature of the attack offense. I'm, I'm a big fan of it. Um, really glad I've had a chance to learn from you, you know, some of the – uh, concepts of the attack offense, you know, versus man to man versus zone and how that works. And then obviously getting that second dose today. So I love that. And then obviously the quick hitters, 
at the end, I think there's a time and a place for those in the Absolutely. game. And, uh, you know, you, you're teaching kids how to play basketball and then you add in a couple of those quick hitters situationally. And, uh, that certainly can help out as well. So tons of great stuff. I keep saying it's simple, but it's effective and it's across all levels. Uh, and I, and I know that's why you've been so successful as, as a coach, uh, so I, I just, um, as we wrap up here today, um, coaches that want to reach out to you and contact you, just one more time, if you can take us through your information, and yep. what's the best way that they can contact you with any questions about this zone offense? So uh, you can get, you can see us on Twitter, uh, either coach and then double underscore strict. That's my personal one. Uh, we've been doing a lot more stuff out of our strict hoops one since, uh, since we're really growing that part of the business. Uh, you can catch stuff on the website. Website's more just informational stuff with coachstrick.net. And then I'm on YouTube also. I've shared a lot of this stuff. I'm going to go back through and tweak a lot of that stuff now that I have time and really kind of clean it up. Um, so I'll be posting more of those things. And then contacting me, the best way to contact me, honestly, is either my cell or my email. That's the way I'm going to answer you. Uh, my cell and email is right there. I know that's not going out to everybody and that's okay. So feel free to contact me anytime. I will help you in any way, shape or form that I can. I, 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 I thank people like coach so much because we didn't have these platforms back in the day and it was really hard to pick up a lot of stuff real quick. So to have people that actually care about other coaches that care about the players out there and want to help them get better. Um, this is really important stuff. So it's nice to be able to help people in any way, shape or form. And I will, I am now officially retired from college basketball. So I have a ton more, I shouldn't say a ton more time, but I actually have more time to devote to helping out in those situations. Um, so, and I know I, I haven't talked to coach about this yet, so I'm going to, I'm going to bust him on this a little bit. I know he's an attack fan because I've noticed on his Twitter stuff that attack is now all in capitals. Every time he puts attack, whether it's my stuff or not my stuff. So I love it. I love it. Let's keep attacking coach. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, coach, I love everything that you have to share. And it's, it's funny you bring that up about the attack. Uh, you know, I, I do not have the attack offense like you do, but with zone offenses, that was certainly something that I emphasize with players to attack the zone. And uh, I love I love that terminology. So you're going to have to patent it, then I'm going to have to pay you royalties down That's the right. road <laughs> using the term attack. But um, the attack offense is, is really awesome. And I have to be honest with the coaches out there who are watching this, that um, I have I have gone on to your YouTube channel. I have checked it out. You have great stuff on the attack offense. So I hope coaches subscribe to your channel. I know you said you're going to make some revisions as well, yep. but there's a lot of great stuff on there. And then obviously following you on Twitter because you're doing so many great things. And I think the best compliment I can give to you, and I mean this sincerely, I see a lot of stuff out there on Twitter, a lot of great coaches out there. Um, I know you're very involved in the AAU game and I do have a daughter um, I have two sons as well, so I know you're involved with the boys game, but I know you do a lot for the girls game, and I would want my daughter to be part of Strict Hoops. I'm not in your area, but maybe someday I will be, and I really love what you do, Coach, and I think you have a great way about you, a great way of teaching the game, and, you know, I'd want my daughter to be part of a program like yours, um, so that that's probably the best compliment I could give you. It absolutely is. I truly appreciate that, Coach. That means a lot, my man. It does mean a lot. Well, thanks so much for joining me. I, I appreciate you sharing the game. I'm, I'm going to pull you in here again, I think, down the road. I, I would love to actually Anytime. maybe in the future talk, maybe some uh, training and some of the AAU okay. scene and some of the things you're doing with your program because you have some unique aspects of your AAU program that I don't see out there from others. So maybe we can connect again down the road. Absolutely. I, I thought you were going to say defense there. I'm like, all these people are going to have heart attacks out there that know me. I'm like, Strick's going to talk defense now? So yeah, training's much more. Yeah, that's better. No one will have a heart attack about that. So. <laughs> well, that sounds good. Well, thank you again, coach. Thanks, coach. I appreciate the time. All right.